Hi, this is Richard from the Ineo UK Technical Services team and I wanted to take you through just a few visualization features within Windchill and how it interacts with QueerView. Now most Windchill users are familiar with the visualization um, either inside uh, the browser view as we have here. We're looking at the structure of this fork assembly and we can manipulate our assembly and we can select items in the, in the visualization pane or in our structure and manipulate data in that way. What you may not be familiar with is where the source of this visualization data comes from. If I look at my representations tab, we'll see that the default representation for this part structure is actually derived from the CAD or the EPM structure that owns this part structure. And you'll see that this is what we call an as stored version. So at the point when the CAD assembly was stored, we generated the default view of that um, part structure. If I click on this, I will open this in Creo View, and you will see a little bit of a difference between this, this version and the latest version. So if I select all of my part structure, if I look at this component here, which is our brake caliper, you can clearly see in this particular view it's a it's colored black. If I go close this now and I look back in my um, structure in here, you'll notice that actually the latest version of this um, of this component is actually blue in color and we have some, if you look closely, we have some annotation features applied to that. So how do I get to that view if I wanted to look in more detail in Create View? Well I've got two options. I can right mouse click in my assembly and here I've got open the structure in Create View and that means that the filter that's applied here can be opened directly. So we can apply all kinds of filters which might be based on life cycle state, on proximity to other components, whatever filters you, you choose to apply. My representations, you'll also see this um, in the top row here, so it says structure. So I can right mouse click and open structure in Creative View. And this time you'll see that we're actually opening the latest, which is the filter that was applied to the structure in that, in that view. And here we're looking at part information, and I can see it's got my latest brake caliper here. Now a couple of other things that may be useful for you to, to know. We also have in Creo View not just the visualization tools, and again, most users are used to be able to manipulate and view, perhaps transform, move move items around, and perhaps build um, sections based on the presets, etc., etc. What you might not be so familiar with is some of the other um, items that are in, available in Creo View. And one of which is um, the properties, which we can get directly in this pane at the bottom here by clicking on this icon. And I can also filter the properties, if I click, do a right mouse click in the table, I can select filter attributes, you'll see that I can choose to show things like perhaps just windchill part information. So I can find windchill information directly inside Creo View. And for assemblies, one other useful feature is that we can now show these in the, uh, in the tree structure here, a little bit like a model tree within Creo. So if I look at my options, we'll notice that under navigation we have this option called use tree columns. If I apply this, we'll see that I've got, for example, the creator name showing in my uh, structure tree. If I configure this, you'll see that there are lots of other useful information I can I can derive here. This could be from the EPM or the CAD document or from part information. And it could be things like modified timestamp, but it could also be custom attributes that we've created. So for example, um, I've got a purchased flag to show whether this item is purchased or not. And I can also derive things like usefully life cycle state. Once I click on those and I hit OK, now I can expand this window out and I'll see that this is always available in the stream. And that is now a setting within Creo View. So if I close Creo View and open it again, um, we will get back to uh, this, this structure view. So you may choose to find that that's useful. Remember, you can always turn these, t these, tab these um, panes on and off just by using these icons at the bottom. What you might also remember is that um, when we're doing reviews and, and so on in, in Creo View, we can do markups and we can create um, annotation sets. So, for example, with this quick section view that I did, if I wanted to then add a note, um, I can just create a note with a leader. And you know, if we're doing some kind of design review, we might say, uh, "Check this face." Missing dimensions. And you're probably aware that we can then do saving annotation set and I can give it a name such as a face review. And this also means that um, we can get back to this annotation set whenever another user wants to look at this. So again we have this annotations tab here and all of the different annotations that different users have created on this are available in this tab. 
So this means that we can collaborate across many reviewers or approvers and always see what kind of comments they were doing. So not just about capturing comments maybe in workflow, but also doing it directly inside Creative View. All I have to do is select one of these and it will pick up exactly what was applied before. Um, and I can e those could even include things like 2D sections and measurements, etc. that we could create um, in the views. So make sure you use those annotation views. You can also find these if I go back to my view here because these were created against the structure. If I expand this, I will see that my um, various annotation sets are generated here. I'll just refresh this because I created a new one. So now we should see that we've got this face review. And so any user can come into this table and open these annotations directly or they can open the structure view and then navigate to the annotations inside Creative View. So I hope you found that useful and uh, keep a look out for other tips and tricks videos.